You tired? Uh, no. I feel great. I feel, I feel inspired. Don't lift your arms, you have pit stains. Continue. Dude, you should see underneath this. You're one in a sweatsuit. Bro. What are you doing? I wish it was hotter. I'm dealing with my own adversity over here, guys. See? It's I real. Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel didn't start waking up this early to beat the Heat. He did it instead, he says, as a promise to himself that he'd never again jeopardize his career like he once did as a 25-year-old Houston Texans assistant under then-head coach Gary Kubiak in 2008. When was the last time you were late for work? So Gary Kubiak was very regimented and at like six on the dot, he would call my office phone and there was two occasions where that just kept ringing and then where's Mike and I'd show up in a panic 45 minutes later because I was sleeping at the time. Growing up without his father around, McDaniel already knew plenty about adversity. I think part of the reason that I'm, that I'm driven like I am has to do with subconsciously some People have scars, and I didn't want to be an afterthought in this life. But when Kubiak fired McDaniel, this dose of adversity was different. McDaniel knew this was his own fault. Once a ball boy in high school for the Denver Broncos and a wide receiver at Yale from 2001 to 2004, he long aspired to be a head coach someday. And now, his dreams were at risk. Well, in his words, he thought that I had to learn a life lesson. In my mind, I was late twice. What he was telling me was, you do whatever it takes to um, get things done. Your priorities are a little mixed up and you're going out too much. And I think you need to get that figured out. The party stuff had to do with alcohol. I wasn't at the stage of my life to kind of like admit to that. It was already hard enough to lose a dream job. And I just hated that feeling. I was embarrassed. Do you associate that time with why you wake up so early now? Well, that's how it started, for sure. Then it became, you're chasing the best version of yourself. This part of the day is so unique because everything is in front of you. After his firing in Houston, McDaniel says he was out of the NFL for 865 days, nearly two and a half years relegated to the now defunct United Football League. When he would return to the NFL, helping Kyle Shanahan in Washington, Cleveland, then Atlanta, McDaniel vowed to arrive to work before the sun. But a battle with alcohol abuse continued. I was drinking, you know, every night. I just thought it was just to have fun. And then you start questioning, okay, well, you know, why is this coming up again? Why am I drinking alcohol in the office at, on a Wednesday night, which is what, what was happening uh, in Atlanta um, in 2015? It made me look in the mirror. Um, I was this close to losing a job that I had changed my life format for. But this time, unlike in Houston, this time that I was risking my career, I had to tell my now wife, you know, you moved across the country and um, our livelihoods in balance. In your office, you have an index card. Yeah. With the number 865 on it? Yes. It's an important number. I get fired in Houston. I'm out of the NFL. So I can either sit there and hate myself for it, or it could be my competitive advantage. And so in 2016, McDaniel, at 32 years old, checked into a rehabilitation center for three weeks, where he'd not only commit to stop drinking, but where he'd also begin to understand why he abused alcohol in the first place. It was a whole deep dive into myself and you realize that I was using alcohol to like just check out so I didn't have to deal with the problems. 
I was chasing Kyle Shanahan when I was 23 and he was 26. And then I get to Washington, now the chase is now a marathon because I have Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur. Your sole purpose is to try to be as good as there is at something. And then you have people that are like you that are doing better at it. As they progressed and, and I maybe went here and then came back, those problems um, seemed to be failures to me. I was worried about the wrong stuff and trying to chase things that didn't matter. How cool is this? this? I mean, right when you get around the bend, you see this, and how is that not inspiring? That idea of perspective is so powerful, so I really go out of my way to never lose that. I mean, how am I gonna go through that whole process and then go up to my office and go through the motion? I know, in hindsight, down the road at the end of my life, when I look back at um, an opportunity to be an NFL head coach. You know, one thing you wouldn't want is regret. You come in, put the film on right away? Yeah. So it just depends if, if I'm in team meeting mode. My assistant has a ton of notes. I've seen this. So there's a daily stoic here. What's that? Oh, you guys want to hear the day. Silence is strength. <laughs> Recall the last. I usually don't read this out loud. The inexperienced and fearful talk to reassure themselves, the ability to listen, to deliberately keep out of a conversation and subsist without its validity is rare. Silence is a way to build strength and self-sufficiency. That's August 5th. Let's go. There's a number there, 865, that we talked about in the yeah. car. 865 being? It represents the amount of time that I was out of the NFL from the end of Houston to Washington. This is a cool one, too. Yo, tell me about that. Um, that's 246. What is 246? That was the time that Mr. Ross called me to tell me that I was the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. I'll never forget that feeling. That feeling was uh, goosebumps. It, uh, it gives me goosebumps right now to be a part of something like that. Um, an organization, this is my seventh. W when you're hired and fired that many times and bouncing around the NFL, you get a, a glimpse at a lot, of, a lot of things, and you know when something has the ability to be great. McDaniel knows how the power of positivity has changed his own life. And now, he was tasked with using the same tool on others, namely, to a tongue of Iloa. Among the first things he did upon his hiring, McDaniel showed to us 700 different plays when the QB did something great. My objective and my obligation as a head coach and is to bring the best out of someone. There he is, man. I'm elated, bro. It is, it is an unbelievable opportunity for me that I do not plan on wasting in the slightest. You can, I promise you that. Um, I'm all in, you're gonna get the best um, out of me that you could possibly get. There's, there's only one way to do anything great. So, um, and there's no shortcuts. But let's go do something that's worth doing. It's on, bro. If you don't have eye black at home, you better go get some eye black, because we're going. He's telling me how excited he is, and uh, that there's no other coach he'd rather play for in the entire world, which I thought was nice since it, this is the first time I've really talked to him. Oh my gosh, Tua looked around and came back to Waddle. What a throw and catch. So what was I doing? When you can say something and back it up with, with clip after clip after clip after clip after clip. Like, people can't help not only see it, but feel how much you believe in that. So there's this thing in the title that I have called Coach. A lot of people, have done it before me. A lot of people will do it after me. I may or may not be elite, but I'm definitely going to do everything in my in my power to be elite. And where the chips fall, the chips fall. 